We are very pleased to have Mr. Vidal in London, who's come specifically to speak at the House of Commons for the All Party Parliamentary Group on Third World Solidarity on the occasion of 50 years of the Cuban Revolution. My name is Sandra Satterley. I'm a journalist. I've interviewed Mr. Vidal in the past for the Financial Times, and I'm here to have a quick interview once again with him. Um, I'm just going to put a few questions briefly to, to Mr. Vidal. Um, and the first question, I think, is quite an obvious one. Do you have any hope, Mr. Vidal, for the future of the United States with Obama in the White House, or is he just another politician with a liberal face? Well, so few of them have liberal faces, I would say he was a unique one. He's got something right, completely exceptional now, because it's a conservative country living on its past, and uh, the past was never as good as we pretended it was. Am I optimistic? Well, why not? We certainly wish him well. He has excited the world. I was brought up in Washington, D.C., capital of the United States, an all-black city. And I used to wonder what would it be like if they could ever vote? Would there be enough of them to elect a president? I mean, all that went through the head of any boy who was brought up in Washington. And of course, it proved to be uh, an exceptional case in that of the United States in the year 2009. Right. So it's very much watch this space. Well, as it were, yes. With great optimism. I have a quote um, that Barack uh, mentioned in his um, speech yesterday. He said, to the Muslim world, we seek a new way forward based on mutual interest and mutual respect. I wanted to ask you what impact you think Obama will have on U.S. relations with the Muslim world? Well, it couldn't be any worse than it has been. I mean, the United States for some time, now that we've embarked rather oddly on a, a late-life empire in which we're behaving like some brand new power has discovered, you know, the stone axe, we behave very badly. Uh, our foreign policies are based largely on hatred of other people. And we, and George W. Bush says, I'm a wartime president, I'm a wartime president, I'm a wartime president. <laughs> and he didn't know what he meant. He's never read the Constitution. He didn't understand anything he was doing. Yes. Uh, thus proving by the fact that he had officially been elected twice president, and I don't think he was ever elected properly once, much less twice, but he, he's accounted as a two-time president without any knowledge of the United States or its history and no interest in governance. He made enemies wherever he went. It was just marvelous for how he could find a situation that he could uh, trash. So we've got rid of the trash expert, and let us hope <laughs> we have somebody who will be interested in statecraft, or whatever is the phrase nowadays. Yes, and enter the Muslim world, hopefully, with, with greater peace. Well, I mean, there are, after all, what is it, two billion Muslims on Earth, and there are not that many of us. So I think you, he'd be well advised for the uh, United States to get along with everybody. Right. OK, well, let us think optimistically. And on that same vein, I have another quote um, from Mr. Uh, Obama, may I say. Um, the quote is, to those who cling to power through corruption and deceit and the silencing of dissent, know that you are on the wrong side of history, but that we will extend a hand to you if you are willing to unclench your fist. This seems to have grabbed the imagination of a number of of journalists, of unclench your fists, fist. do you think this can happen? Well, no, it's asking for it. Yeah. If you t say to another power, well, you've got a fist directed in my direction, I think I'd better set you right. right. Uh, let's hope that Obama isn't getting all kinds of ideas about his station. The United States is a declining power in the world. I mean, 
Under Bush, we have wrecked our military, which after 1945 was our one reason for being a world power. What concerns you most about Obama in the White House? Nothing. I think he's uh, above average for the <coughs> presidents we've been getting for the last 40, 50 years. Everybody seems to like Jack Kennedy now that he is dead, but after all, it was Jack Kennedy who tried to demonize Castro, tried to murder him at least a dozen times, and it's not Jack's proudest moments when he was at war with the Fidel Castro's revolution, which was a very hopeful thing in the history of the world. I know, I've been down there, I've watched it, I've gone into the hospitals that uh, flourished under uh, Castro. Electronic gadgets, which I don't understand, they're making them, tons of them. And he's made a rather dour, rather sad country into a very happy one. I am a witness to it. I think you, you were lost there in, De well, in December in 2007, and I wondered in a nutshell um, what lessons you think the world can learn from Cuba? Well, everything from agriculture, ways of living in a world that is running out of earth, water, time. Uh, Cuba has been pioneering in everything from food to electronics. and. Medicine and education. Right. It is a country from which we can learn a lot. We have nothing to teach them, unless it be how to cheat. <laughs> right, excellent. Um, yes, um, and to the more topical issue of, of, of Gaza, um, to what extent it is the almost, in my opinion, blind support of Israel by the United States responsible what is hap for what is happening in Gaza today? Well, it just proves that Americans have no gift for statescraft of any kind. We are a little country uh, absorbed in ourselves, uh, redolent of self-love. Every time you turn around, we're t telling the world how we're the greatest nation of this and that and so on. I can only tell you I have never seen a, a Norwegian with a green card who wanted to live in the United States. <laughs> we do not attract interesting people anymore because we are behind. This, this will change. I mean, this is a vigorous people, the U.S., and uh, we have not lost that vigor. But all of it that goes into tax evasion now, that goes into bullying other countries, that goes into noisy Jesus worship, which Thomas Jefferson hoped that we would not go in for. He was our third president. So we are doing many things wrong, but that will sort itself out, I trust. And do you think that the Middle East um, crisis, particularly with Palestine and Gaza, that once, once, and we, I speak hopefully that problem gets sorted out where they It'll have It'll never be back. sorted out. Come on, this occupied land. Yes. A bunch of European Jews went down there after the horrors of the Holocaust and so on, and they felt somehow deserving of somebody else's country. Well, I don't see why they are, and the uh, Palestinians don't think that they are either. So there they are in a strange place claiming it's their homeland. Why? Because a Stone Age deity gave them, gave them all that land. Well, that, that's God acting as a realtor, which whatever God's functions, I can't think of it as he's dealing in real estate. 